Hello, in this video we're going to look at part two of the reading and use of English paper for Cambridge First for Schools. Part two is called the open close. You're given a short text with some words missing and for each of the words, you, uh, each of the gaps, sorry, you need to think of one word that will complete the sentence. Now that's quite crucial, one word. Contracted forms like don't or I'm don't fit because they would be do not or I am. They're two words. So please pay attention to that sort of thing. You might find that there's more than one answer possible here in this test. That happens sometimes. But even if you think of more than one answer, please only write one answer on the answer sheet. If you write more than one answer, you'll lose the mark, unfortunately. Also, for the first time in the test, you'll have to actually write words. So it's really important that you write clearly in capital letters on the answer sheet. If you have the right answer, but you write uh, illegibly or unclearly, you risk losing the mark. Also remember that the whole reading and use of English paper requires you to write in pencil on the answer sheet. So before we try our example, let's look at a few little tips, things that might help you. Unlike part one, the multiple choice uh, gap fill, part two is a lot more about the small pieces of language. For example, auxiliary verbs, have, do and be, modal verbs, possibly phrasal verbs, more likely the prepositions in phrasal verbs or prepositions generally. Linking words come up very often, but, however, and, as well as articles, a and the will often find their way into this part of the test. Pronouns can appear, it, they, perhaps relative pronouns like which, who, why. So with that in mind, think about the way that the sentence works. Read the sentence very carefully and if you see there's more than one clause, usually this is marked with a comma, look at the general meaning. For example, if a sentence has two clauses and the first one is positive, either in meaning or grammar, but the next one is negative in meaning or grammar, there needs to be a word that links those two parts. And that needs to be a contrasting conjunction like but, although, however, depending on the sentence. So think about those linking words. Also remember the basic rules of English grammar. Unlike some other languages, Polish for example, English grammar does require that there's always a subject in the sentence, even if that subject isn't real. In Polish, you can say, for example, pada desh, which means it's raining. In English, we have to say it's raining, even though it doesn't really exist. This is what we call a dummy subject. So we always have a subject, but when you read this text, if you see that there's no subject word, that's a good clue. It will help you find the right answer. If you can't see the answer, try to reformulate the sentence as a question. If you're presented with some information here, maybe a place or a time that something happened, try to reformulate it so it makes a question, like where did he go? What time, when did he go? You might find that the question word is actually the word that's missing. So when we think about these small units of language, the little words that could be used here, it means that we can rule out all big words. Basically, if it's long, it's wrong. So if you think that the missing word is armchair, or cannonball. It's not the right answer. It's too big. So, follow the link in the description below if you haven't already downloaded this PDF file. This time turn to page 22 in the document 
and you'll find there the open close. The title is A History of Surfing. Take a couple of minutes now, write your answers in capitals on the paper, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look together in a minute. Okay. Okay, so you've now had a look at this open-close exercise. Let's go through the answers and see where they come from. For number nine, we want the word have. It seems to have formed a central part of the culture. Why do we have have here? Well, the whole structure points to the past, but because of the way it seems to works, when we talk about the present, we can say it seems to form, but to go to the past, we have to go perfect. It seems to have formed. For number 10, we're introduced to a list of examples, Samoa, Tonga, and Hawaii. When we introduce a list of examples with the word as, we say such as. So the answer for number 10 is such. Number 11, when we connect the idea and the word regard, we need to use as. These people did not regard surfing as a mere recreational activity. So we're showing those two next to each other. For them, it was much, number 12, more of an art. So we want to say much more, we're showing a difference, we're showing a comparative or comparison between them. If it helps, take much out of the sentence and the meaning is not changed. If we know that there is a comparison here, we know that the word we're looking for will be more, which we often find in comparisons. For number 13, the answer is the, because just after the gap we have the word century. Century is a noun. It's a countable noun. And countable nouns need an article. We know which century we're talking about because we have the adjective expression early 20th. So we need to say the early 20th century. Number 14, the answer is which. Again, we could reformulate this sentence. We could take became an important surfing center. We say, well, what became an important surfing center? Ah, Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach became an important surfing center. If we want to relate those two ideas, we use a relative pronoun for an object, which is which. For 15, we want the answer it. However, it was not until the 1960s. This is kind of the dummy subject that we talked about earlier. We have the verb was. We need a subject word to make the sentence grammatical. And if there is no real subject, we use it. So it was not until the 1960s. This is also a kind of set expression when we talk about the passage of time. And finally, number 16, we've got but. And we can see how this works if we ignore the more difficult parts of the language in that sentence. We have phenomenon boosted not only by the success of surfing films, but also by pop songs about surfing culture. There's a lot going on there, but we can take out the word boosted. It doesn't matter. We don't need to worry about successive surfing films. We have to recognize not only, but also, which is a set formulation to show uh, an additional idea. So hopefully you'll see now how this part of the exam works. You'll see what Cambridge expects of you in the open close, and you'll be ready to face it for real in the exam. Good luck. I hope you'll join me again soon when we look at part three. Thank you.